Welcome back. This is, of course, M Dog joining you from Winding Rivulet. Leveling up our character, creating uh, this series has been so much fun, and we're going to continue for a little while today. We are pretty much at the place now where um, we want to create uh, pearl barley. And we're hoping that pearl barley will be pretty good for us at this level. Uh, because basically the next thing we have, and really kind of the only thing we have in front of us, is grind out that silver so we can start upgrading our, uh, upgrading the, our, um, our gear. So we're not going to get points on, um, we're not going to get points on digging very much. And the question is... Basically, we can buy five loaves of bread for what it costs to buy one thing of potatoes. And so the question is, and let me show you what I'm talking about here. If you buy potatoes, they're $1.90. All right, and then you go and you're going to make potatoes. You're going to use your one portion of potatoes. Okay, so that's $1.90. If you buy a loaf of bread, it's 36 cents. So basically, if it is... Oh, we got a percentage. If it is five, uh, if we get a point in making bread every five loaves of bread, then it's a little cheaper to do it with bread. If we start getting points less often than five, then it's going to be cheaper to do it uh, with potatoes. And we're not going to sit here and, and dig all day, I promise. I'm just doing this as, as we have a little bit of energy left. Now let's start making some bread. Not potato cubes. All right, so here is the moment of truth. Let's make four of them and see if we get any points. And um, the the truth is, we probably end up using a little more bread over the course of of your fishing career than you do potatoes, although. I guess when you get to higher level, that's like no longer true because I, I'm thinking about my main account. I can't remember the last time I used bread. All right, so there's five bread in a row and we didn't get a point. All right, let's try potato cubes. We didn't get a point there either. All right, let's go ahead and Let's buy a couple more potatoes. Man, I can't imagine us not getting points on potatoes eventually. Wow. And that's a dollar ninety every turn. I don't think we've gotten a point yet, have we? 18.5 still. So maybe it wasn't the... Uh, Maybe it wasn't the bread. Maybe it's just a low percent chance at this at this point, close, so close to 20. This does happen. It's like the closer you get to the next skill up in crafting bait, the harder it is to get those points. And then when you unlock the new bait, it'll suddenly be a lot of points for a while. That's kind of crazy though, isn't it? Now the other thing I have to remember is what's a little different for me than what I'm used to 
is that this account is free to play and I'm used to premium. Um, so I'm just wondering if Uh, part of what is different for me at this point is not having premium, and so the skill up's just coming a lot less often. I just hope something isn't um, something isn't going on weird. Okay, there we go. Eighteen point seven. Eighteen point eight. Now all of a sudden we're getting it. All of a sudden, they started clicking there, didn't they? Like several in a row. <coughs> this is why, at an early level, I like digging with the shovel so much. If you find yourself in this position, don't do what I'm doing right now, only because um, you're not in quite as much of a rush as I am. <laughs> like, I'm really trying to unlock Pearl Barley today. Um, but as you saw earlier, we're still getting points occasionally from, um, from digging. And so... You know, we could stand out there and fish with our feeders for an hour and probably finish off these points digging. It's a lot of silver to spend on potatoes and bread, to be honest, at this level. I think we do need a few more potatoes, unfortunately. Yeah. Whew, we're almost out of silver. All right. And I think this is one of the things that, you know, I've and I've and I've I've thought about this more theoretically, because I haven't had a low level count in a while. But it really bums me out that potatoes are where they are on the list on uh, harvesting baits. Because um, you're not going to use potatoes for ages. Ages. Most people don't use them until bear. And when you have the, you know, really good gear that can handle bear. So, um... Anyway, all right, so we're going to go fish somewhere so I can keep digging and try to get pearl barley unlocked. I am uh, a little sad. I, th I thought it was going to be a pretty quick process getting those last two points. At this lower level, I expected the bait harvesting bait percentage to go up a little faster. Um, all right, let's test something here. Somebody was telling me, now they were talking about using pearl barley, but they were telling me about a spot that they catch bream and I think they were referring to this spot but let's just see let's just see what we get here because even though we don't have pearl barley unlocked we should still kind of get an idea of what's in the water I would think And I could be wrong on the spot they were talking about. So, so many of you have left really helpful and encouraging comments on the videos. I really appreciate that. 
Um, but someone had, had was talking about how they were pretty consistently catching bream and they said south of the position I was at last time, which I think last time in the beginning we were fishing basically right up here, right? By the way, if you didn't see my video, let me, um, so I did a video recently more for like high level players to be fair, but I think it might do pretty good for anyone um, and it was basically standing in this spot using uh, three float rods and the type of fish that you catch in the spot are basically really good fish for bait fish but part of it was just that the bite rate was so good oh, I wonder what size hook we have on here so did you see that now we're using cheaper cheaper hooks here we have 20 so in my video we were using 24 because again we we're going for really small species uh, a fish of the, the species that you're going to catch here because we're trying to get bait fish uh, in that video here it may be worth fishing this spot at this level only because of the bite rate if you're trying to level up your float fishing which we're not necessarily trying to do at this point but you know might be a pretty good place to make a little bit of silver if we catch a few a uh, few nice gudgeon or bleak or mostly you catch gudgeon bleak roach dace few perch here oh, it is hard it is hard having these uh cheaper hooks to be fair on my main account i've got these really expensive hooks but uh this kind of stuff just doesn't happen that much with those hooks one of the sp one of the things that's been fun about this spot is that because they're smaller fish and these fish don't tend to nibble as much the species that are here i haven't been losing as many fish fishing in this spot on my main account getting those bait fish but we've missed two in a row here so let's try this one more time and then let's dig for a little bit and you're just drifting with the current but this is a really cool place and actually the, the maybe the best oh we're 19.3 now maybe the best bait to use in this spot is um, bloodworm. Get so many, so many uh, gudgeon that way. And I really like the gudgeon for bait fish. Now, the other thing that we do on our, on our uh, other account that we can't do here is we're using really nice uh, light fluorocarbon line and uh, I think that probably does help increase the bite rate maybe a little bit. Um, just having the ideal line there. There we go. Nice bite. So in a place like this, I actually kind of enjoy float fishing in a place like that because the bite rate is so high. A lot of times you put it in and you get a bite before it's really even drifting that much. Um, and so that's been really fun. Uh-oh, I just ran right by my pole. All right, so it looks like it's gonna be this one because it's way far down here. No. Okay. Well, this could be a bream. That's kind of what it feels like. It's not fighting very much, but it's got a little bit of weight to him. Yeah, so maybe with pearl barley, we really would catch a lot of bream here. Um, maybe this is the spot he was talking about. And that's a marker. Can you imagine on this little rod, this little line, what a uh, like a three kilo bream would feel like? Which, you know, those are not that rare. <laughs> it's just, could be brutal. Could be brutal. All right, let's dig a little more. And um, let's go back down to our little uh, bait fish spot. That was kind of fun. We'll do some more spin fishing at some point. But right now, my main focus is just uh, trying to get to pearl barley. So we'll just kind of dig, make bread. And then when we get really desperate, make a potato here or there. Try to get that last few points.
I think there's another fish on. Alright, let's try it right here. I think there's a fish on, but let's just let's just tr try this real quick before we check the feeder. Give the fish time to really get get on there on the feeder. And so this high bite rate with these uh, with maggots and stuff, small hooks here, it really might be the case that it's just about anywhere. The nice thing about that one spot is you just get so many gudgeon and bleak for bait fish. But I suspect with a small hook and the right bait, you get a pretty good bite rate just about anywhere on this river, going floating down current. A nice fish. I think that's a little chub, guys. Flapping around on the ground. Yeah, that's so fun. Well, what is interesting is that we haven't had a single bite yet on worms out of that spot, but uh, maggots is doing work. Look at that. Another fish. I'm surprised about the worms, though. There aren't many places that you can put worms if there's fish there and not get a, vi a bite eventually. Not get a bite eventually. All right, let's dig some more. We're getting so close to pearl barley. Nineteen point four. Come on. Goodness. Finally on the worms, maybe. Okay. Ooh, our energy's already back up, that's great. I don't know if it's because we're eating so much or what, but energy's going up pretty fast. Yeah, I think I, <laughs> sometimes, ooh, 19.5, that's awesome. We've got 0.5% to go. Uh, I think I do get spoiled on premium, though, and I maybe don't realize all the time the difference in, uh, in uh, skill ups percentages. All right, this is three fish we've caught on maggots to zero on worms. Now, we did kind of mess up a bite there a minute ago, picking it up too quickly. 
And there's a bleak. There's a bleak. Alright, we're a little low on energy, so let's float fish for a second. And uh, then we'll dig some more. We're very close. You can use worms in this spot, but I do think that maggots or blood worms tend to have the highest bite ratio. Uh, in fact, if we go back to town, I might get some blood worms um, I, and just see kind of how that goes in this spot uh, with this gear set up. I don't know if the gudgeon are a little more cautious, and that's why, because I was catching more gudgeon than anything else using blood worms in this spot but um i caught a few on, ma on maggots as well so i'm kind of surprised we haven't seen any gudgeon pop out yet but it may just be coincidental we haven't spent that much time fishing in this spot on this account nice bite and so if you can just if you can kind of wait when there's a bite like that wait long enough to uh just not pull it immediately kind of go against that instinct to pull it immediately I feel like you tend to tend to lose less fish. Yeah, something's about to be on here. Nineteen point seven. We're so close. We are so close. And we're getting that nice red worm. Nice red worm bite. So my guess is this is another bream, but this one might be a little under the marker size. Let's see. It's just pulling in a little easier than the last one did. Um, yep, yep, yep. But our gear is just a little, a little light for bream fishing. Uh, it, I mean, it's doable. It's just we're gonna have to wear them out. You know, this is the first fish on on worms in a long time, and this might be a bream as well. This might be a little bigger one. We don't have, we just need to worry him out a little bit. We don't have to worry him out a lot. We'll be able to drag him in. is a bream it felt heavier like i mean you know it felt like maybe this is a two kilo one i don't know yeah 2.1 look that is a beautiful fish for you at this level or for me at this level a 2.1 kilo bream i mean there's not a lot better that we could be catching to be fair in terms of just getting some silver not tearing up our gear i'm gonna try throwing bread in for a minute I just want to see what bread does here in this spot. Make sure there's nothing. Okay. Okay. Nineteen point eight. One other thing I wanted to try in this spot before we um, end up going 
somewhere else or whatever. So I did want to try spin fishing here. All right, let's try a straight retrieval one time, and then we'll take. You know, then we'll, we, we need to. I mean, I'm, I really want to focus on the on the uh, pearl barley and doing other stuff here, but this isn't going to be the. Ooh, this isn't going to be the video that we spend as much time spin fishing as we might sometimes. But uh, Man, that fish hit it almost like it was a bass or something. Just as soon as it hit the water, boom. Just nailed it. Now, the bad news is, I think the fish went into the pond. We literally could get spooled here. Maybe it didn't. Maybe it stayed on this side. But if it did go in the pond, we're going to be dragging it across the land. It's probably going to come off, right? Yeah, there's no way it's just right there, correct? Maybe we can get it to go back down the other way. Yeah, there it goes. We want it to swim down river right now. Do we have a leader on? We do. I'm not sure this leader would actually protect us from pike, but. It seems like it might be swimming back up into the pond now. I'm not sure if we're gaining or losing more line. <laughs> I think we're losing more than we're gaining.
Oh, now it's back down. Nice, 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 nice. Yeah, let's don't walk towards it. Let's just stay here. So you're saying there's a chance. I think we need to stay at 20 because if it pops, it will pop way up into the red. Well, between the couple of bream we've caught and whatever this is, we might be making some decent silver on a small amount of fish. Especially if we can get lucky with a cafe order or something. Although, we're a long way from actually getting this into our net. Alright, it's, it's far enough down here. I think we can start stalking it a little bit without scaring it back up into the pond. I think. We'll find out. We want to keep tension so that we are continuing to wear it out. Uh-oh but we also kind of want to get closer to it so we can see if we can lift it at all it's just gonna it's gonna make it mad if we lift it i think but let's just try The reason why you don't typically want to do this is because it wears you out. Although this gear is so light, it doesn't really do a lot of taking our energy away. Um, but you also greatly increase your chance of the fish getting off the line when you do this. So I'm holding down the right mouse button to lift it up. And just trying to get it above water to see if, you know, kind of lifting it above water helps us um, get some a better angle on it to bring it in. It's certainly a safer option to just to continue to let it wear itself out before doing something like this. Um, but it looks like in this case we are now making much more progress. But we'll see if it uh, eventually gets its strength back and runs on us again before we can get it in the net. I mean, my guess is that it was a little, that it's a little chub or something, but I'm not so sure. That might be an eyed, which would be super fun. It's a little marker eyed, guys. This is really nice. It's not very big, but any bigger, any bigger, I'm not sure if we would have gotten it in. All right, that's close enough. You can put your net out now and go ahead and get it. Yeah, two kilo eyed. Look at that. Spin fishing up to 2%. Very fun. Let's check these lines. They have got to have something on them. Yeah. So we've caught two kilo bream and a two kilo eyed. Two of my favorite fish. There's a small eye. And we need to, uh, my goodness, we need to put something else other than bread on here if it sits in there that long and doesn't have a bite it's obviously not the right bait we could put potatoes on just kidding don't put potatoes on so let's try wet red worms since they're, we know they're bream in this spot i think pearl barley at winding works better than red worms but red worms should still do okay and yes we need to dig like crazy now Nineteen point nine. We are one percentage point away. Sorry, point one percentage point away. We do have a fish on the maggots. It looks like. I gotta watch the friction break I'm leaving my rigs at when I put them down, her feeders.
this is an interesting size fish here it's not quite strong enough to pull but it was also a little difficult for us to bring it in there initially looks like a bream looks like another bream on maggots maybe another close to two kilo definitely a marker yeah it's very nice Let me, um, see if I can, I wanted to give credit to the person that recommended fishing for bream in this spot. Um, and again, they were talking about with, um, with pearl barley. So this is Waga Bagaboo. Bagaboo, Waga Bagaboo. Left a very kind comment on the last uh, video and was, I believe, referring to this position with pearl barley. So I uh, just wanted to give credit because it's really been a great, a great little spot um, for Bream. And I know what that sound means. And you know what that sound means before I do, because you're seeing it on my screen. We hit harvesting baits 20%. So, let's do what we came to do, and let's craft some pearl barley. Delicious pearls. All right. And what's the other thing we unlocked? Oatmeal. We need oatmeal and milk. Not a uh, not a bad bait. I'm uh, not sure. We'd have to look and see if that is something that we'd want to use at winding. I'm not even sure. Woo. I'm telling you, these bream might get us in trouble. We'll see. We'll see. Oh, pulling it, pulling it. A little small one. All right, let's try the pearl barley. Let's try the pearl barley. So on this, uh, with my, this little starter gear and the couple skill points I have here and there, we're throwing about 70%. A little dace. We're going 100% pearl barley. Now that we have the bait, we're gonna see what we can do with a couple different spots. I'm also curious to see if the bream will bite all night long on the pearl barley. Um, so you do still want to dig, but I think we also, I think we also want to Let's try something. I'm curious about pearl barley on a uh, telescopic rod here. Let's see if we get any bites that way. I suspect that like the worm, maggot, blood worm, that that line of bait might do a little better getting quick bites like this, but let's just see. Might as well test it out now that we have it. <clears throat> There's a bite. Let's see what we got on pearl barley here. A little bleak. It's a nice one too. It's a nice little bleak. So it took us about, what was it, 40 silver to get that last 2%. And to be frank, a lot of the percentage points we got were off digging. 
I seem to remember on my main account, now again, I probably had premium at the time I was doing it. By then, I had premium, I think. I seem to remember that I was occasionally getting skill points up to like 35% fairly consistently by, by digging. And then past that, it was so seldom. Not that it didn't happen, but it was just so seldom. It stops being like a reliable way to get points, it seemed like. But yeah, until you're in your 30% or so, I think you just keep digging. Plus, you're getting good baits. I mean, those red worms are pretty expensive for a low-level player. And they're such a good bait at some locations, at least. So, I think it's worth it. All right, let's see what the uh, pearl barley caught here. Probably a small bream. Ooh, it's heavy. <laughs> Hard to lift. Yep. I'm not sure if that's a fish or if it got stuck on the bottom a little bit. Looks like it did. bleak or biting in this spot it's kind of nice okay so here's this is one spot thanks uh so much for the recommendation obviously the bream are here the other nice thing is that the eyed are here uh and and probably other predator fish as well that you can catch on the on the um spinner rod so this seems like a good spot and one that we might come back to but i do want to go check a couple more spots and let's see if we can get one spot started to be tested before nightfall. And uh, I think the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to go test the um, deeper hole here with pearl barley. I think we're going to test the deeper hole here with pearl barley. Wait. Right here. <laughs> I'm like, nothing looks familiar. Help me. That's right. So we did one at 70%, one at 80%. And then we're pretty close to our little spot here. And let's test it with pearl barley, I guess. So this spot, once you hit um, nightfall, once it starts getting a little darker, this spot gets a lot slower. And at that point, you probably want to, you know, do something else other than hit this spot. But if you're looking for a spot that's just has low intensity in terms of um, the damage it does to your gear but still ca I think we're in the wrong spot here by the way but uh, still catches some nice fish is that a dace yeah um, this is it then you know you're you're probably if you're using small hooks and you're using telescopic rods which by the way we could put feeder rods here just as easily put maggots on feeder rods and then use just one float rod would probably we're going to catch a lot of the same fish. Um, but, you know, this would be a good place to grind silver out and not have to worry too much about damaging gear or, you know, or whatnot. And you occasionally are going to catch 
uh, or it's possible to catch little like trophy gudgeon. I mean, you know, you're going to get occasionally get fish. It's not just a grind. You'll actually make decent silver on them. So um, there's a lot of cafe orders you'll get because of how many different species you're catching in this spot. This is not a bad spot to, even though it's small fish and it may not seem like it, it's not a bad spot to level up your skill points and even through cafe orders and the occasional nice one, um, make some silver. And it looks like pearl barley, so far, the bite rate's been pretty nice. Um, with float fishing here, I'm not sure that it's quite as good as what bloodworm and maggots feel like, but it's pretty good. And it looks like we're catching a, a higher percentage of dace and bleak on the pearl barley. I'll tell you what, let's just go, let's just let this sit here. Hopefully we'll get a fish on that'll stay on, but... Let's go look at something here. I'm kind of surprised that we don't have a fish on one of these. Well, we do. Okay, so let's see what we're catching here. My my hope would be that not only could there be bream here. Yeah, see, that's that's kind of the hope here is that maybe we'll catch some really nice silver bream. Because um, frankly, it's just going to be tough for us to bring in. If it's only bre uh, the big bream, it's just going to be tough just because of their their bulkiness. Let's pull this one in a little closer. Okay. And that little silver bream was so small, I didn't set our uh, bells off. Oh, just too quick. You gotta wait on that one. That wind has picked up 6.2 meters. So we've got some markers. We had some pretty decent fish. blowing against the current, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> Just skip it on out there. All right, we got a fish on down there with the feeders. I think we waited the, the perfect amount of time there. There's the first gudgeon we've seen. These gudgeons are so fun. So the gudgeon will bite the pearl barley. Not a bream. Is that a roach? It's a big old roach. time here that we could uh, spin fish before nightfall. A 
perch. I like it. I'm going to suggest that it's still worth making bread with your last piece of loaf because the because it's so cheap because I think you'll still occasionally get a skill up point at this at this skill range so I don't know we'll have to see but I, th I think it probably is still worth doing that sum at least Well, this might be an interesting one. I don't know if y'all been seeing any of the chat in game since I've been making this video, but really cool people hanging out in this chat channel. If you're looking for a home of really helpful, encouraging people who are also very entertaining at times, uh, this is a good place to come. They've been helping each other out um, and providing a lot of good information as we just all sort of test different things and report back to each other. Um, but if you are looking for a spot, uh, just search for my dogs, M-Y space D-A-W-G-S chat channel, and uh, come join us. Uh, we've even done some random, just throw, send in bait to people who are in the channel and um, give giveaways, all kinds of stuff. And then you also, it's another way that if you're interested in watching my stream, you'll kind of know when I'm on and, and all that good stuff. So, but. Um, this fish is, is quite interesting here. If you don't know how to do that, if you hit Q and hit click on this little thing here, it selects a chat channel and then just type in MYDAWGS down here. And we're at 81 players right now. A lot of people hang out here, even during the day, even days that I'm not able to be on or stream, there's always people in there fishing and, and just kind of helping folks out. And they're actually also talking about my Discord. If you are looking for a place to actually do voice chat with folks that is another good place you can go and if you want the discord information then just come to my stream and you'll see it posted there occasionally in chat or if you type exclamation point discord in my stream you will uh, see the link there the only thing I would mention about discord while we're talking about it is I do require when I'm streaming especially but I think in in the channel you end up in through that link I think it's required anyway that you have to use push to talk and that's just because when there's a lot of people in there, if there's too much background noise, it can just be really tough. So, I think the fish must have started swimming towards us here. Oh, it got off. Man. That stinks. After that long fight. So... You know, you, you take a chance when you move around, you take a chance when you uh, let tension off, which is what ended up happening there for us. Let's get this line in, man, goodness, it's taking forever. Okay.
All right, so I'm gonna have to wrap this video up soon. So let's just go to one more spot. Um, traditionally, what is this? Perch, no, Crucian, sorry, my eyes are blind. Traditionally, um, this spot we're in here, throwing into the, um, into the uh, camp spot, into this hole, traditionally this spot is good at night, especially on things like pearl barley. So um, we're leaving, but not leaving because the spot would not be any good. I actually think you catch more consistent, larger bream at night in that spot, at least in my experience. The only reason why I'm leaving is I did want to at least get a little bit of testing in on one more spot here. Um, uh, and if you've watched my other videos, you probably know where I'm going here. But um, now that we have pearl barley, I just want to see if we get any... Uh, any chub bites down here and it's a little slower with chub at night but um, it's still it's only 11 p.m. 2300 we might still get a little bit of action here so you kind of want to just aim for yeah just sort of the left end of that tree and you don't have to throw very far let's kind of do that on both of those Let's tighten it up. The second one was definitely shorter, but we'll try it. Um, and let's go ahead and get our float rod out. It's a little late for spinning. Man, I'm, I'm really sad we missed that. Uh, we missed that fish. I, I, I was probably just talking too much, focused on other things. If I went back and watched it, I'd probably be appalled at how risky I was uh, taking it. All right, now, late at night, sometimes, I don't know, sometimes it's hard at, at some of these early lakes especially to catch much else other than things like rough on, you know, worms and stuff. But in my experience, on my main account at least, we were still doing pretty good. We would get decent chub bites overnight here. And also that camp spot, and I'm sure there's some other spots here, like the first spot we were at, would catch some uh, some pretty nice bream overnight. So fishing for rough is an option overnight and can be a good one, especially at winding because of the chance of getting a donut rough, the rare fish. But that's not, the, you, that's not all you, you don't have to do that. There are other options. I guess that's what I'm, oh, dang, holy cow. Okay, hold on, guys. Oh, I think we're going to get it in, but listen, that was close. He almost um, he almost broke our line, which is 3.9 3.9 capacity, but those chub just fight. If you catch a chub without a reel, that can be pretty scary. All right. Um, so theoretically in this spot... What are we talking about? Is this maybe a three meter spot? I don't, I don't know if that's right or not. Let's set it at one meter. And let's see if we can get something here. Yeah, I do have to wrap this up shortly though. It's too, it's just, I think we're gonna be just short of hitting level 11 in this video unless we start catch one more fish or two here and it's going to be a nice one not just another common roach this might be a chub let's see no nope, it's a roach so I caught ooh, that was way too far the um, to be fair the chub we call it chub trophy and, and nice chub here but it, it was off of grasshoppers with larger hooks and I haven't tested this spot in a while on my main account, so I don't know if the chub are still pretty active here or not. I'm also trying to see if there's rough here. I mean, if, uh, if there's many rough in the spot, we should see it on the worms there, unless we don't have it set quite low enough.
So if, if we're continuing to just catch roach here, and we are, um, it's probably not the best spot to be at. Wow. <laughs> that is a big roach. Well, we did hit 11 on roaches <laughs> for what it's worth. Um, all right. Okay. So we'll have a couple things to think about. We've got another skill point to put in. And, uh, another skill point to put in and figure out where we want to fish for our next time and again like i said before we're down to 9.6 silver before we sell these fish like i said before our goal at this point honestly is just to focus on how can we make some silver to upgrade gear i mean that's that's really the only concern we have right now we don't we're no longer worried about um having to harvest baits really fast i mean that stuff will come as it comes we'll be using a lot of pearl barley and We'll make some oatmeal too sometime soon, but um, you know, that's it's just it, right now it's about how do we incre increase our gear so we can catch some of these fish. It's really sad we didn't finish that order. My goodness, we we're one off of that roach order. Um, so yeah, like look, right now, there's a 12.28 silver. You know, you could get these five gudgeons so easy. Oh, we one eyed short as well. Looks like we're just gonna be unlucky here. Um, but if you were in this situation, what would you do? You'd go keep fishing, try to catch that other eye. I'd certainly get it, the last common roach. But I bet we did okay on silver anyway. Look at that, 50 silver in 49 minutes of fishing here at Winding Rivulet. Not bad with, you know, very beginner starter gear here. Um, so that puts us at 60 silver. And just to give us an idea here, what we're going for is... The first thing we're going to purchase, I'm almost certain of it, is going to be the upgrade in the feeder. So we need 118 silver. So if we do that one more time, we can get the feeder, right? The third feeder. And then basically do this one and a half times and we can get the Lacerti. Um... Trying to find the. Oh, it must be out of stock. Yeah, look at that. The Adriatica and the fishing prod are out of stock here. So there's not necessarily. It's really the proton that would come next in terms of what's in stock here, and that requires level 12, which obviously we'd be way past level 12 before we could afford that. So that's where we are. Got to keep grinding out on that silver. Um, now that we have pearl barley, I feel like we will be able to increase our silver rate a little bit. Uh, might be worth trying the pond. We haven't shown you the pond yet, and it can be a pretty good place to sort of grind out some fish, uh, at least to go for rough. I, I don't know why, but we just haven't found rough in the main river yet. So anyway, as always, thanks for watching, and uh, I do hope to see you again next time. Thanks so much.